Welcome home. This is Audio EXP for the 4th of June 2022. And the title of this episode is Are You Tired of Charity RPG Bundles? BRW Games is in the spotlight this month, as voted for by patrons. I haven't tried to get in touch with BRW yet, but I will this weekend. I promise. Try Through RPG has their hottest game listed as Joseph Bloch's Book of Lost Lore, which is a silver bestseller. If there's anything you would like me to ask them, if I get a review lined up, which is my goal, then let me know. As it's the start of the month, it means that Geek Native patrons, awesome people around the world, have another creator from the RPG community to vote for for next month's spotlight. The options are... Long Shadows Press, His Cursedness, Astral Shark Games, Shenanigans Media, and Bloodstone Press. If you had to pick a cool name from that shortlist, I think you'd be challenged to find a winner. Are the all great RPG publisher names? It's been another busy week here at Geek Native Towers, although not necessarily in Geek Native and RPG stuff. The UK is odd now, as there's so much grim stuff happening in the world, and we'll get on to talking about that and how the RPG community is responding, but also because it's the Queen's 70th Jubilee. I have been willing in the past to continue to pay for the royal family. I'm not much of a royalist, but I saw the imperial legacy as a way to keep tourists coming to the country. I think that's a more challenging position to reconcile now, given the behaviour of Prince Andrew and the uncertainty of whether King Charles will meddle in politics or not, and King Charles feels like a coronation we'll see soon enough. Why mention the British royal family at all in a geeky highlights podcast? The way the whole country has had an extra holiday, street parties are happening and heated political debate has made me think of how infrequently it happens in role playing games, even feudal ones. It should probably happen more, right? Dragon Turtle Games, our British publisher, sells Cyberpunk Carbon 2185. It's all mega corpse in that game, but there's still room to note the Jubilee, as all proceeds from sales for the game will be donated to food banks this weekend. Why? Dragon Turtle is doing it to highlight the increasing wealth inequality in the country. I'm not sure how many sales they'd expect to generate over a bank holiday. I suspect not many, and I suppose you could accuse them of grabbing a bit of publicity. And perhaps that's true, but they are shining a light on an actual issue. Sometimes it's not about the money. Sometimes you just want to do something. Sometimes success comes from not sweeping a problem under the carpet and saying, we don't talk about that at the table. I thought about that while blogging another charity bundle this week, and then again when I had another to blog. Are you getting tired of them? Honestly, I don't blame anyone if bundle fatigue is beginning to creep in. I mean, there's a straight up and impressive mega bundle from the Pazio community on the newish Pathfinder Infinite site. It's for PazioCon, and you'll get over $110 worth of Pathfinder goodies for just 25 bucks. What a great offer! But I've not seen much buzz. And perhaps that's because a bundle deal like that sings to the choir. In contrast, a few, I have seen coverage for the charity deals, and I think that's because there's a story attached. Pundits like me, or proper journalists, as you might find in sites like Tidesbreaker, don't just want to highlight the bundle, but also want to boost the social good that they represent. It's become a cultural thing, I suspect. Putting together a bundle is a way to do something. And even if you don't want or need all the RPGs and games, buying the bundle is another way to do something. Uh, Couldn't the bundle's platforms just offer a donate button? I suppose they could. But it's not as if Humble or Drive Through RPG or H hide charity, and it's often just a click away. I suspect there are all sorts of tax complications and payment quirks that mean the retailers find it much easier to provide an e-commerce service and allow the publishers to donate, to donate or not, as they see fit. Traditionally, we get to the bundle deals last on Audio XP, so let's stick with that and finish up on all this week's offers. 
when it th that time comes. First, let's stay with the cultural quirks around gaming, but move on from charity. In France, the government takes an active role in protecting culture and language. And there's a whole authority that regulates language so that English words don't creep in and replace the French. The news this week is that the authority has made some rulings, so terms like esports, pro gamer and streamer now have official friends. I, I won't attempt to pronounce them, you can tell speaking isn't my thing, but the translation for streamer is something like live player host. In other words, many catchy gamer terms have slightly longer but more descriptive way of saying the same thing in French. Is it illegal to oppose the rulings of the French Academy? Uh, no, I don't think so, not from what some Google searching can surface for me. It is frowned on though, and using English when there's recommended French won't make your professional life easier. So while the UK might be maintaining a monarchy and France protecting French, there are still stories of change and evolution out this week. My favourite is the excellent news that Drive Through RPG will be coordinating their first ever game designers jam. They will be calling these pocket quests. And this is an idea that the rival Itch.io platform has had a lot of success with. Game designers have a time frame and a challenge theme. For the first pocket quest, the theme is a summer camp and games are designed around that. There are some rules on the games too, like format and size and similar, Overall though, the idea is to be as imaginative as possible. And then the whole collective output and highlights from it can be promoted. If all goes well, we get a better community and exposure for less well-known names. And that's why I think it's great to drive through RPG are doing this. Although I don't see many technical innovations to enable it, I think a lot of heavy lifting is going on behind the scenes with hard work from the publisher support team there. Another bit of evolution comes from fandom. I haven't gone on a monologue about how virtual tabletops, digital marketplaces and the ecosystem that enables the playing of tabletop RPGs are fundamentally important to the future of RPGs for a while. I'll almost resist doing that so here. Almost. I will remind us that fandom sold D&D Beyond the Wizards of the Coast but are working on a marketplace for Cortex and have a shop with Fanatical. We'll see Fanatical later when we get back to bundles. The core fandom business, though, is thousands of fan wikis. An interactive map-making feature has been tested for over a year, which doesn't make fandom's development process seem very agile, but it has been rolled out this week. It means those fan wikis can show maps and let people click on locations to find out more about them. You can see how that will be interesting to world builders, and it might nudge fandom towards competition with sites like World Anvil. From there we're edging back towards virtual tabletop competitors again. We'll just have to see what fandom do, but I like to think of them as a dark horse for the digital ecosystem. I do acknowledge, however, that they are unlikely to stray too far from their core ad business, which is mainly user-generated content and not software as a service. Now, while fandom are adding stuff, I also had the story of about 33% of Google Play mobile games being removed. That's about a quarter of a million apps removed from the store. Why? Google hasn't said, but it's probably because these are old games that haven't been updated and are now more than two years behind the latest API requirements from Alphabet. Does it matter? Well, it's good for security, so yeah, it matters. It also reminds me to check my phone for old apps, I don't use them anymore, and delete them. Android automatically removes permissions from apps after a while, if you don't. Sometimes though, old games spark to life. I had forgotten entirely that Jim Zub and team took Skull Kickers to Kickstarter to fund a campaign setting. Skull Kickers is a comic book about two fantasy mercenaries getting up to violent adventure, and that Kickstarter was in 2020. This week, I noticed that Skull Kickers was on drive through comics. Well, maybe it was on drive through RPG too, but it was a comics team promoting it and Skull Kickers is a comic to me. Also, I won't name the Skull Kicker RPG title fully, as Apple is sensitive to adult language on podcasts. Still, 
The link to the 5e Adventure sourcebook and setting is in the transcript, and you'll get to that from the show notes. There's another quirky Kickstarter story this week, with the reign of Discordia, which seemed to cancel and then relaunch almost back to back. The project was cancelled on the 31st of May, and it's back already. So what happened? Well, simply put, Owen Stevens got ill. And so, after talking to co-creator Darren Drader, the project was cancelled. The idea was to avoid too much Kickstarter stress landing on just one set of shoulders, or even perhaps pushing ahead taking money when there was uncertainty. And in that respect, and why I'm bringing up on this podcast, is isn't it unusual that this doesn't happen more often? I wonder how often solo or small team Kickstarters launch and then complete despite the creators knowing by that point that they're likely heading into ill health. And before we finally get to bundles, I want to share some news that while we might be suffering from bundle fatigue, we don't seem to be suffering from Stranger Things fatigue. I blogged about the official Longsleeve Hellfire Club t-shirt and it's been a popular story. Normally these merch discovery posts are just for my amusement and they don't do much. This shirt has had a little bit more attention. Now, we're going back to fandom for our first bundle. Over at Fanatical, there's the Festival of Video Games, and that includes Warhammer Skulls. In Warhammer Skulls, you can get a host of Games Workshop content and some pretty big discounts. I've seen over 80% off, and some DLCs are just 20 pence. My highlight is the digital edition of the Talisman board game for 84% off. There's a sci-fi theme going on this week at the Bundle of Holding. The popular Traveller RPG retro clone, Cepheus, has a bundle, and the starter tier has three complete RPGs. They are the Cepheus Deluxe, the Stars RRs, and the Space Patrol. There's also a Traveller bundle in the shape of Game Lords Traveller. This offer has material from Game Lords and Martial Adventures, third-party publishers, one of the very first for that old RPG. And For the second year in a row, over on H, there's the Queer Games Bundle. June, of course, is Pride Month. Here you'll get nearly 600 RPGs for $60. It's doing well, and I think one of the reasons is that the coordinators are clear about how critical the offer's success is to some disadvantaged creators who have contributed to it. Sadly, there's also the Bundle for Buffalo, which includes all sorts of games, and is in response to the racist mass shooting in the States last month. Money for the bundle goes to a charity which, and in their words, resists the ills of the white supremacist cis heteropatriarchal capitalism, including policing. Now, I'm sure that's not to everyone's tastes, but as you know, I think it's political to avoid politics in your gaming chat. Why? Well, you've still a decision to look the other way or to stay quiet. And in this case, no one is forcing you to back the bundle. And lastly, and more typically, there's a dynamite entertainment deal on Humble called The Boys vs. The Girls. And it has The Boys Comics, now a very good series on Amazon, alongside female-led stories like Barbarella. And on that note, let's wrap there. Enjoy your bundles and see you next week.